So first of all, we need to uh, establish the linear pair postulate. Okay, you need to know that word, that term. Okay, you know what it is really. If we read the direction or uh, read the definition, it says if two angles are a linear pair, then the sum of their measures is 180 degrees. You know that, but we're going to have to. You're going to have to use that word, that phrasing in our proofs. Okay, so um, we are trying to prove that if N and K intersect at this point right here, then the measure of angle one is equal to the measure of angle three. Now, we know that because what are uh, angles one and three? What do we call those? They're vertical angles. One and three are vertical angles because they share a vertex, they do not share a side. Those are vertical angles and we know that vertical angles are congruent, but we're gonna prove why they are congruent. So, uh, we have the outline here for a proof, okay? We just need to prove, or we just need to um, provide the reasons, okay? We need to provide the reasons uh, for their statements. So let's do that. <clears throat> um, you know, typically two column proof, you've got statements on the left, reasons on the right. So, uh, statement one says, since lines N and K intersect, angles one and angle two are a linear pair, so the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two equals 180 degrees. Well, the reason for that is what's at the top of this page, the linear pair postulate. If two angles form a linear pair, then the measure, uh, the sum of their measures is 180. Linear pair postulate. Postulate's kind of a weird word, isn't it? Okay, statement two. Since lines of N and K intersect, angles two and three are a linear pair, so the measure of angle two plus the measure of angle three is 180 degrees. Well, that is also the linear pair postulate. You can write it again, you can put the little quotation, whatever you want to do. Statement three. Statement three says the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two is equal to 180 degrees. And the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3 is 180 degrees, then we can say the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 equals the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3. Does anybody remember which property that is? Since they're both equal to 180, what property says that we can set them equal to each other? I think that's the transitive property. Y'all remember when we did those at the beginning of class? Transitive. If two things are equal to the same thing, then we can set them equal to each other. Okay, so then if the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two equals the measure of angle two plus the measure of angle three, then what allows us to say that the measure of angle one equals the measure of angle three? What do we do? What do we do from this statement right here to get to that right there? What happened? Subtraction. We subtracted the measure of angle two from both sides, so it disappeared. We've done some proofs already. We're just adding to it. Okay, that's the subtraction property. Okay, so all of those statements were correct. Um, then part B says write an argument to show the following. If lines N and K intersect at the point shown, then the measure of angle 2 is equal to the measure of angle 4. So it's the same idea, right? But instead of one and three, we're talking about two and four. So can't we use the same outline that they had um, and then just use the angles that are uh, more helpful to us, right? So if we're trying to do two and four, then we should probably talk about what? One and two being a linear pair and one and four being a linear pair or we could do two and three and three and four, okay? It really doesn't matter as long as four is involved um, and two is involved. Okay, so pretty much I'm going to take their proof and I'm just going to change the numbers of the angles. 
Okay, so I've got my statements and reasons. And I'm going to kind of shorten things a little bit because theirs was very wordy. Um, I'm just going to say angle one and angle two. Yeah, one and two. <clears throat> one and two uh, are a linear pair. And then I'm going to, I'm going to use some symbols in here. I'm going to use a little triangle of dots. That means therefore, the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two equals 180 degrees. The reason linear pair postulate. Okay, that's my first one. My second one, I need to connect one to four. Okay, angle one and angle four are a linear pair. Therefore, the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 4 is equal to 180 degrees. And that's our linear pair postulate. Okay, their statement 3 is going to be the same as ours, except we've got different numbers. Since measure of angle 1 plus measure of angle 2 is 180, measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 4 is 180. I can set those equal to each other. And that is because of my transitive property. And then number 4 if we take, if we subtract the measure of angle 1 from both sides, then we are left with the measure of angle 2 is equal to the measure of angle 4, and we can do that by subtraction. Okay, so the key to the proof, to any proof, um, is typically... Usually in the beginning, the statements aren't really connected to each other, but once you get past the first statement or two, usually you start connecting these statements. So like three, we connected one and two, and then four was just a variation from step three. Um, you can do some subtraction or you can do addition. It just depends, okay? Um, so since we have established that one is equal to three and two is equal to four, then we can um, use what we call the vertical angles theorem. Now, the difference between a postulate and a theorem is that a theorem can be proven. Okay, we just proved that these vertical angles are congruent for both pairs. Um, so that's been proven. The postulate is kind of an assumption that we make. A uh, linear pair, we it, it's it's a definition. Okay, that's the definition of a linear pair is that the sum of the angles is 180. Uh, there's not really a way necessarily to prove that. That's just the definition. So our vertical angles theorem says that vertical angles have equal measure, which y'all already knew, but we have established it. So that means going forward, we can use that as a reason in our proofs. Okay, we can use that as a reason in our proofs. So um, here we have the claim that two perpendicular lines form four right angles. Now again, this is something that y'all know is true. You've been taught this for a while. Um, if you have two perpendicular lines, you can end up with four right angles. But here is a proof of it. You start by establishing that L is perpendicular to M. That was given. If it's perpendicular, then that means those lines form a right angle, and they mean angle one. That's the definition of perpendicular lines. Uh, three, says that the measure of angle 1 is 90 degrees. That's the definition of a right angle. If it's a right angle that has a measure of 90 
degrees. Here is our vertical angles. Okay, one to three are vertical angles. Uh, we established that previously. And so since they are equal to each other, and one is equal to 90, then we know three is equal to 90. Then they go and they say that, um, so we've got two of those angles are 90 degrees. We've got two more to prove. Okay? One and two are a linear pair. So therefore, the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two is 180. What is the reason for that? You've got to fill in that reason. Why can we say that the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two is 180? The linear pair postulate. Okay? The linear pair postulate. All right, now let's see what they do from seven to eight. Okay, let's do, let's see what happens from seven to eight. Ignore this 90 degrees for a second. How do they take this statement and turn it into this one? How did they go from the statement in number seven to the statement in number eight? What happens? They subtracted. Measure angle one. Measure angle two is by itself now. The measure angle one had to move, but the only way to move it is to subtract it. So uh, the reason for number eight is subtraction property. And they also, they kind of substituted. And they, they did two steps in one, which is not typically something you do in a proof, um, but they did it here because then they said that equaled 90 degrees. Well, they know that it equals 90 degrees because the measure of angle one is 90 degrees, so they put that right there, and 180 minus 90 is 90. So uh, there was also a substitution uh, as well in that. But again, usually you only do one step. You only do one thing in each step. Um, you don't really do two steps in one. Okay? Angle two and angle four are vertical angles, so that's exactly like statement four. It's just with different angles. Well, what was their reason? That's the definition of vertical angles. So that's our reason for number nine as well. Abbreviating here, definition of vertical angles. <coughs> the measure of angle two is equal to the measure of angle four. That's statement number ten. Well, that looks just like statement number five, and the reason for number five was the vertical angles theorem. If you have vertical angles, then those vertical angles are equal to each other. And most of the time, I abbreviate theorem, T-H-M. It's very common. Number 11. Then all of a sudden, they jump to the measure of angle 4 is equal to 90 degrees. Well, why can we say that? I know that we know that 2 is equal to 4. Well, where did we establish what 2 was equal to? In the statement 8, 2 was equal to 90 degrees. So, what did we do here? I wish they had put this down, but um, they substitute. Okay, 2 is equal to 4, and then we say 4 is equal to 90. They substituted the 90 for the measure of angle 2. Okay, and then 1, 2, 3, and 4 are right angles. They are right angles. Well, that is the definition of a right angle. If your angle is equal to 90 degrees, then you call those right angles. So that's the definition of a right angle. Now, I realize proofs, it's, it's a little difficult to prove something that you already know is true. Um, but I'm going to be honest, uh, the way that this would show up on a quiz or uh, on a test is you're just going to have to kind of